What's up guys, that really gross guy here. We are back and today we are going to be taking a look at all of the Tenogen round 15 items coming our way. So I'm pretty excited. There's, I believe, 16 items that are uh, that are on their way. Um, but if you are on consoles, I just want to inform you that round 14 is coming your way very, very soon. So look forward to that. And there's a bunch of awesome stuff that came with round 14. So uh, yeah, have fun. If you want to take a look at uh, the, the round 14 deal, you can just go back and check one of my videos for Tenogen round 15. But Anyways, with that said, we're going to get into some of these skins, and I just want to preface that I try to give one solid picture for each one of these items, and we talk about it for just a little bit, and then uh, I highly suggest going and checking out these uh, these on the workshop individually if you are interested in any, any of these skins, because there's... Um, most of them have a significant amount of detail that you can only get by, you know, changing, you know, by, by looking at them, you know, on, at different angles and stuff like that. So anyways, without further ado, uh, links in the description if you do want to see uh, the, the actual links, um, you know, to, the, to these items. But anyways, uh, getting right off into, uh, into some, an awesome skin, the Garuda Successor Skin by Procetizen. And oh boy, does this look good. Procetizen, once again, delivering with a fantastic skin with all sorts of detail. And uh, of course, for Garuda, who I, I've, I've come to adore recently with, uh, with the, you know, the Fortuna release. But uh, fantastic frame, fantastic, uh, you know, skill set. She may not be for everybody, but aesthetically, she looks fantastic. And this definitely holds true to her just... A really cool aesthetic design. Um, just the line work, the details, the uh, the the work with the textures, uh, you know, across the the body when it comes to the metallics, um, even up on her chest area, you can tell that there is almost as though there is, uh, you know, a, a texture that runs over her chest, and then off to the one side, um, it's it's asymmetrical where there is this. Uh, it looks, you know, like a cloth that drapes across uh, the one side of her chest, and looks absolutely fantastic that doesn't even go into the detail of the of the back and the collar kind of look that comes with it with the texture and uh the booty of course um just looking all around fantastic that's not even getting into the fantastic line work and detail of the helmet very good another awesome skin delivered to us by Procetizen. so moving on from garuda um, following up by two skins by Yadis, the first one is going to be the Ion Excalibur skin, which definitely is jumping into some competition with Excalibur being one of the most loved frames and a lot of uh, Tenogen artwork for uh, for Excalibur. But this definitely is going to give uh, you know some some Excalibur fans. Uh, a brand new awesome skin to go in and enjoy. Um, there is the asymmetrical helmet, which has uh, this ring that runs around it. However, it is uh, a broken, uh, a broken piece where it's uh, isn't that like a Ronin thing? I could be wrong. Anyways, looking very cool. Definitely some line work in here. Definitely some extra detail in here uh, added to added by Yadis. Um, to get it into the runnings for Tenogen. Um, and now that it is accepted, um, I'm sure we're going to see the skin all over the place because it is it is very good. Um, I've personally invested in uh, two Excalibur Tenogen skins so far, so uh, I may not pick this one up right away because I'm trying to spread the love. Um, but definitely a good skin. I'm sure a number of you guys uh, are excited by this, but Another Ion skin by Yadis for Rhino is coming out, and oh boy, I've been looking for a Rhino skin, and there's a couple that um, I've been I've been debating on picking up, and this one for sure is uh, now. Once I see it in game, I'm probably going to decide on one of the Rhino skins because this one is uh, beautiful. It's got some definitely really awesome texturing, uh, some good line work. The helmet, <laughs> look at the helmet, looks so cool. So cool. Great job, Yadis. Uh, you, you're likely going to see my money <laughs> very soon. So uh, there it is. Looking very cool. Um, following that, 
we have an Avara skin by Rakao named the Astraea skin. I know that some people were really looking forward to this skin making it into the game. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw some comments. I don't know if it was on my last video or just in the uh, Tenogen section on the forums of people really hoping to see this skin in round 14. Unfortunately, it didn't make it in because I'm sure there was just a little bit of, uh, you know, tweaks that were made to this skin by Rakao. But here it is making it into round 15 for all of you of our lovers looking very very good uh just just wow it's definitely got some some really cool line work uh the back and the detail and just the where the metallics are placed and how they're placed um is very very cool not to mention there is a little bit of uh, adjustments made to the bow for this custom skin um very cool the helmet of course um you know with with the way the helmet is designed um, it might be, you know, right up your alley. So there you have it, Avara Astraea skin. Very cool. Good job, Rakao. Next up is one that I definitely saw comments of people being very upset that it did not make it into round 14. And that is going to be the Night Hunter Nidus skin by MZ3. And oh boy I'll, I'll admit myself that when this didn't get into uh, round 14 i was like oh man but that skin looks so good uh, there must be something there must be some little you know uh tweaks or something that needs to be made to this skin for it to be accepted because uh i know de is picky and the way that nidus kind of uh you know uh, opens up with his his uh mutation stacks there was probably something that just animation wise didn't work or maybe there was just a little bit of something that de wanted uh extra for this skin because all in all i knew the skin was fantastic i knew it was going to make it at some point and uh i guess that work whatever needed to be done was completed for the skin and here it is being accepted so everybody night as fans or just fans of this skin the specific skin you know celebrate because it's coming our way and i'm excited because um i'm on board i am 100 percent on board with this skin um mz3 uh you <laughs> you will see my money here soon <laughs> uh anyways following that great job though great job fantastic skin following that we are going to have Saren's blade of the lotus skin by beast buster now if you have uh seen some of my previous videos when the blade of the lotus skins come out you know that i am a fan of this really cool almost like medieval knight style that some of the previous works uh have have definitely incorporated into these skins and Saren is no exception um in in the line work and the detail and the metallics and stuff looks just gorgeous on Saren. um this picture i wanted to bring for you guys because it shows it from three different uh, angles however this is another skin that definitely deserves to uh to take a closer look at because from afar you can't see all of the detail that was put into the skin but you definitely can if you go and visit the web page but Saren blade of the lotus by beast buster fantastic really cool helmet texturing metallics once again following up with uh some some quality so great job beast buster and uh, those are all the, the Warframe skins. Uh, we have one Warframe helmet by Lubox, which is, for whatever reason, not showing up. What? I just... Okay, let me fix that right now. How did that happen? Um, do, 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 do. Is it the format? Is it the format? Let me now position, size, fit to screen. That was weird. Anyways, Revenant immortuous by lubox which is going to be a replacement or an alternate helmet for uh revenant and i'm gonna be completely honest is i wasn't on board with the i wasn't too crazy about the default helmets that came with revenant i thought they were all right i thought they kind of did what they needed to do um, but because he is kind of a unique frame with a unique theme um i wasn't so enthralled with his default helmets but this one's pretty cool um you can see it from the three different angles and you can see that the uh the winged like ears or horns i guess whatever that come i mean they're more like ears because i don't know anyways um you can see it from the back how cool that is going to look especially because you're going to be seeing your frame from the back all the time not to mention that cool energy color that uh that that 
is is detailed on that helmet um, looks very very cool and then the wispy kind of uh, energy color that flows from it up and uh, downwards towards the back very very unique very cool and uh there you have it the remnant immortuous by lubox great job great job all right so we are going to take a look at the two Nikana skins, the only weapon skins that are coming in this round, but both of which I think are very, very cool. Uh, this first one um, is going to be the Mithra Nikana. Um, I have done a Tenogen Spotlight on uh, his, his Mithra Mirage, and I may end up picking up this skin to keep with that cool Mithra theme, but this is the Mithra Nakana, um, split up in its its sheath and its sword. So on the left side is the sword, um, which has this cool energy kind of deal going through it. Um, like it looks a little electric. I don't know. Very cool. Um, it's got that like glassy energy look that you see with a lot of the Mithra stuff, um, which looks very cool. And then on the right hand side, you see this sheath, which, uh, when placed together, it looks unique. Definitely go to the uh, the the workshop and check out this this uh, sword in all of its detail because it's it's kind of hard to tell exactly how this goes together until you see it and you go, ah, uh, all right, that makes sense. And uh, I'm excited to see this in game. Very cool. Uh, another great work of art by Luke and you. So, another. Nikana, this time by one of my favorite creators. All these creators are fantastic, but Hitsusan, I feel like, hits me right in my uh, my aesthetic, you know, pr preferences. And this one is the Shinigami uh, Nikana by Hitsusan, as well as Rail, Rail Art. Um, I'm not too familiar. I know Hitsusan has been doing his own work, and then Rail has come in with some assistance to put this together, maybe in concept or some, but they collaborated in some way, shape, or form to deliver us this incredible Nikana skin. Uh, Hitsusan, I have noticed, is a, a very... Uh, he, he really puts a lot of detail into every single piece that he does, um, and this Nakana is no exception. Definitely worth checking out on the workshop to see uh, all the way down to like the hilt and all the detail and all the texturing and just how, how, how much love and effort he puts into every single one of these pieces. And uh, this Nakana looks so good. He just did the rapier recently, and I knew that he was uh, intending to make this Nakana, and I was super excited to see it. And here it is looking fantastic. Uh, great job, like always, Hitsusan. Uh, just, just wow. Just wow. Wow. All right. Following that, we have a Cyandana. Um, this is going to be the Dominus Cyandana by Lead 2012 and Jayon 009. And I, once again, I am a, a sucker for Cyandanas, and this one is no exception. Looking very cool. I love I just I love the like the floatyish pieces that are up by the shoulders, and then um, I do. I do like the the drapey drapey bits. I know that those are going to be a little bit less cloth like and a little bit more of like a a leathery look. Um, kind of curious as to how they flow with the the movement of a warframe and kind of see how flowy it is. Um, that's kind of what really gets me on the Cyandanas is a really cool uh, a flow, I guess, when when the Cyandanas are are on, you know put on the frame. Um, We'll see if I am 100% on board with the Cyandana when it comes out, but I do like the way it looks. Um, I just hope the delivery is as good as the looks are. So there it is. Um, all that awesome, wonderful stuff. We're getting into the operator pieces, and I'm not 100% on board with the operator pieces because um, operators we only see so much of, but I know some people are super stoked to uh, jump on these operator pieces and customize their operator. So without further ado, we will get into those. Be a little bit more rapid fire with these. But first off, we have the Loomis Oculus by Luke and you. Um, this, I believe, I showed in round 14, but it didn't make the cut because it needed a little extra help. Um, but it was, or maybe it, was, it started out as kind of a joke, but 
it ended up making it into the game after being customized. Um, but it's going to be a part of the other Luminous or Lumis uh, pieces, which include like a hat and earpieces and stuff like that, which have already made it in the game. So uh, they look pretty cool. They look, I mean, it's operator stuff, so it's up to you if you want to go through and pick those up. Next up, we have the Oris Crown, Ori's Crown, by Lucanu and a collaborator of Hari Pear. Sorry if I butchered that. But this is going to be a like a headpiece, um, and it's very angelic, I guess, is the best way I could put it. Um, I'm, I'm mostly coming from the fact that it has white and gold, which I love. I've, I've kind of kept with the Orican look in the game, which I think is very, very cool. Um, but it's it's a nice-looking uh, headpiece, I guess, for, for operators. Um, if I had to choose kind of a... Feminine, Orican, like angelic operator, this would be definitely a piece that would make it onto my my design. So, um, however, I'm more of a an edgy Orican, you know, too good for for everybody else kind of operator design right now. So this doesn't quite fit my aesthetic that I'm going for, but um, it is interesting for sure. Next up is the Kuritsune Kuritsune by Action Man, which is another eye piece, which is. Yeah, very interesting. Um, definitely gives me like, uh, like I don't know, like definitely very futuristic vibes of like, of like a VR headset that is that that small and that I don't know. Just um, I want to say like Blade Runner, but I mean, it, yeah. Anyways, um, we'll 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 just we'll just move on. It's a very cool, very cool uh, uh, design by Action Man. Um, definitely worth picking up if you are uh, into the operator uh, aesthetic, you know, Tenogen stuff. So, and then lastly, we have the Optima by Dead Nexus and Swanky Swaggernaut, uh, which great name by the way. Um, which is kind of a I'm gonna I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say it's kind of like a Corpus expire, uh, inspired um, like headpiece. Um, is it I considered eyepiece? Maybe uh, I don't know what slot this would be added into on the I'm assuming eyepiece, but it looks like it is some sort of optical um, interface type thing, or just you know, uh, or it's just meant to interact with the operator's brain or something and and be a thingy. I don't know. Um, I think it does look cool. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell from the 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 textures and jumping into the workshop. Um, you can see it in a number of different colors, but I'd have to see it in game to really see how if it clashes or not with with uh, you know some of the operators. I don't know if you're running with a Corpus inspired operator design, this probably is right up your alley. But um, that's not what I'm going for personally. So, anyways, um, that's gonna be it for me, guys. Um, if you are interested in my Tenogen Spotlight videos, um, I am working on one right now, which is a Fortuna theme. Actually, I'm working on technically three because i'm doing two skins i'm going to do a video of those two skins together which are both fortuna themed and i'm going to do separate videos highlighting the details and the tech you know all that stuff of them in separate videos but there's that and then in the outro you will see my playlist of tenogen spotlight stuff um, if you are interested uh, your guy support helps me create these tenogen uh, spotlights more often so if you guys do want to support the channel um, just by continuing to stick around and view do viewership stuff or if you are uh, willing to there is an extra way to support me through patreon which i have two uh, patrons right now helping me kind of get some things done they're helping me number one make these tenogen spotlight videos a little bit more frequent and uh, getting me into playing anthem when it comes out as well so um, I appreciate those guys. I appreciate all of you for the continued support. And uh, I, yeah, I hope to see you guys again in another video. Blah!